Hi there, this is Alan and Victor's IET 210 Let's Play project. Today we'll be doing a Let's Play on the Binding of Isaac Rebirth. The Binding of Isaac was first released back in September 2011 for Microsoft Windows. Later in November 2014, the creators released a second standalone game, which is merely a revamp of the first Binding of Isaac game, called The Binding of Isaac Rebirth, which became available across more gaming platforms such as PlayStation 4, Xbox One, Nintendo Wii U, and Nintendo Switch. Isaac and his mother lived alone in a small house on a hill. Isaac kept to himself, drawing pictures and playing with his toys as his mom watched Christian broadcasts on the television. Life was simple, and they were both happy. That was until the day Isaac The Binding of Isaac is an indie roguelike RPG game that focuses on the protagonist Isaac. The game uses many references from the Bible such as the prologue showing us Isaac's religious mother hearing voices from above, who she believes to be from God, convincing her that Isaac is becoming corrupted with evil. The mother then disposes all of Isaac's toys and confines him into an empty room to confess his sins, but it wasn't enough for the voice. The voice tells Isaac's mother to sacrifice her son in order to prove her faith. Seeing everything happen through a crack in the door, Isaac begins panicking, looking for a way to escape until he stumbled upon a trapdoor. The whole prologue references how Abraham received a message from God to sacrifice his son Isaac. Now left with no other options, Isaac jumps into the pit of darkness and the gameplay begins. When you first start the game, it brings you to a character selection, and by default, Isaac is unlocked, while the other characters will require you to perform some challenge in the game to unlock. For example, Kane, you will have to hold 55 pennies in one playthrough. Starting the game with Isaac, who has 3 hearts, an average movement speed, and attack power. Initially, the map shows some operative actions the player can do, such as moving, attacking, and placing a bomb. Here you see me shoot tears with my arrow keys. On the right, you see a treasure room. It gives an item that can potentially buff the player, and you don't know what it is before heading into it. For this instance, I got Spider Baby, which summons a spider every time I get hit. Entering one of the rooms, I encounter one of the most basic mobs in the game. It, does, it runs away from me and when I kill it, it summons another spider. Here we see a room that has a chest and a key but are blocked by rocks and I don't have enough bombs so I went on with. This room, I see a lot of flying mobs. I clear it and sometimes I will get a item for clearing a room. I got a bomb this time. Here we see a special door at the north. It indicates that it is a boss room. In one of the first stages, we encounter the Duke of the Flies. This boss summons flying mobs that protect it and surrounds itself. Every stage will have a unique boss you must defeat to move on to the next stage. This boss is taking me a while because it is still early in the game and I don't have much power-ups or even an item. You will receive an item every time you defeat a boss. And during this playthrough, I got the torn photo, which gives tears and shot speed up. To advance onwards to the game, you must jump into the pit. For the rest of this video, I will show some gameplay while talking about the game's design.
The gameplay might appear simple at first, but it's actually difficult when one plays the game. The gamer motivational model associated with this game is achievement, where the player is able to unlock all the characters and collect different transformations to improve one's power. The game is continuous where our position always matters and has a high meaningful play. The actions we make are discernible because whenever we inflict damage, the mobs flash red. Our actions are also integrated from the accumulation of items and when the mobs finally die from taking multiple hits from the character. The aesthetics of the game is the challenge it provides from the increasing difficulty from stronger mobs and more complex opponents when you progress further into the game. The choices the player can make during the gameplay are deciding whether or not to accept the power-ups, and these choices can influence which final boss the player will encounter. The business model of Binding of the Isaac is mainly through game sales. Every game title will also have a DLC too. Although the revenue isn't that great, because the game is relatively cheap, it is quite popular and has a large number of sales. The way this game is designed, with replay value and RNG, has given popularity to speedruns. People will restart the game until they get desirable items in the early stage, where they see fit that they're strong enough to finish the game in a quick time. There are also forums on Reddit and Steam community where people that share enjoyment in Binding of the Isaac can bond over it together. <laughs>